Jeroen, thank you very much for joining me today, speaking about the future of Bond and the biggest elephant in the room. Is there a future for Bond or is Bond really dead? I mean, he died in the last film. We all know that. It's no secret anymore. But uh, there has been a lot of discussion on what is going on with Bond at the moment or what is not going on. What are your thoughts about the current state of Bond? Well, first of all, thank you for uh, for having me and uh, immediately introducing this uh, very interesting topic. Um, I was very eager to, to jump on with you on this. Uh, but yeah, in terms of what is going on in the world of Bond, I think we can be quite sure because for the, the past couple of years, as far, far as I am aware, the news has been there is no news, sort of. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. seems like still to this day, Nothing is going on, mm -hmm. uh, which um, I think uh, is a bit of a problem to a lot of Bond fans. We're, we were maybe so spoiled back in the day, especially, you know, um, you got to, of course, live through the times when they were released every two years. You know, I only uh, I, I was born in 1990, so I got used to that in the 90s and then, you know, the early 2000s. But now for the past decades, it's, you know, the, they're getting more and more spaced out between movies. And I think it seems to me a lot of it has to do with the motivation of, of, of Barbara Broccoli, maybe. Yeah. How do you feel about this? Uh, I think so too and I've uh, I was scared when she started doing other projects aside from Bond I mean she is a very good producer she's very high regarded in, in Hollywood she's one of the most powerful women in Hollywood or she was at some point um, but when I saw that a lot of her projects uh, ended up being flops in the cinema uh, total box office bombs I thought right. wouldn't it be better to stick with Bond but I mean I can understand for a producer that it is difficult to make this your life's work and do this every day but I mean you have such a thankful fan community that will exactly. always be on your heels for what you deliver uh, every two years I mean that was with Cubby Broccoli huh? regularly yeah. every two years uh, and as a producer, I would really, I would love that, that I have a fan community that loves my work and the output that I give them every two or let it be three years or something. You know? um, but I'm really, really 50-50 on this because sometimes I think she's lost interest as well as Michael J. Wilson, but he's getting very old now, you know? Yes. Yeah. How long can he carry on uh, to do this demanding job? I think it is a very demanding job being a producer on this and coming up with new ideas uh, for Bond in a modern cinema landscape and in a modern world that we live in. I mean, you can't, can't just bring the old Cold War stories back. Um, the Russians no. as the villains and things like that. So, but on the other day, I'm like, well, you have a multi million dollar franchise at your hands, at your fingertips. Why don't you do anything with it? That that's the thing, and I think you you uh, you you made it spot on, and it makes the difference between her or at least her in recent years, and her father very apparent, doesn't it? Because if you remember the, the largest gap in, in Bond history, that is still, luckily to this day, between License to Kill and Goldeneye. Yeah. Uh, but that wasn't uh, Cubby's fault because of all the lawsuits and you mm -hmm. know the story. Yep. Uh, but even during that time, Cubby made sure there was a script ready for a potential uh, number three a Dalton movie, and I believe I have the the Mark Atlet's book here. Mm -hmm. I believe they even had a script for the fourth one uh, ready. So he was always, I think, the correct word is like um, he was more hungry than uh, Barbara was with Bond. He always wanted to get on with it and and have things ready, even at times when there was no possibility. 
Yeah. And with Barbara, it seems like if you, you see her interviews or you read her interviews, she's more like acting as if No Time to Die was finished, you know, last Christmas almost. Like, you know, we, we just got off. We need some time to recharge, which uh, is understandable. But don't forget, you know, No Time to Die, it was released in 2021, but production finished before COVID after all, you know, in 2019. So yeah. it's getting near five years since production finished, if you look at it that way. And they still are acting like, oh, you know, we have all the time. With Michael G., you're right as well. He is getting older, which mm. to me raises the question, should Eon maybe pass on the rights to, to new producers or keep it in the family? Like, I, I know too little of, of Michael's son, Greg Wilson. Mm. Maybe he could, maybe he is... Uh, one a man for the job but i i wouldn't know the answer to that but if you're not hungry anymore to to keep doing these mm. maybe pass it on maybe mm. is the time or that's actually a good question is that is, should we want that is that what what because we have to somehow i feel get to a future with with bond in a way yeah and I was really hoping Greg Wilson would step in and take over gradually, not taking all of it. But I yeah. mean, he had a producer credit on No Time to Die. I don't yeah. remember if he had one on Spectre, but he had this little cameo appearance. So I yeah. thought, OK, that's him stepping yeah. up gradually. Yeah. But I was never 100 percent sure that he really wants that. I yeah. think he was sort of pushed into it being part of the family business and it is still a small family business, uh, Eon, you know, yeah. but I think he never jumped on the bandwagon fully for, no, uh, for that. I think that you're right. You know, you have this multi-million dollar company at your stake with so many fans eager to see these films, mm. but you know, Barbara as well, she's also kind of born into this, you know, so th yeah. this could also raise the question, should producers outside of the, the Broccoli family and Wilson family take over or is that too too risky? I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't have the answer to that myself, to be honest, but me neither. You know, no. Yeah, because we and... so far it hasn't been proven that, well, mm -hmm. Never Say Never Again was made um, mm -hmm. and that wasn't to you know that you could be very divisive about that one but so far all successful bond fans films so to speak were made by eon but i am convinced there are creative producers out there who could do it but it's very risky a risky question i would say yeah yeah absolutely and speaking about the the fan base <laughs> uh which is also divided 50 50 some of them say stop sitting on your hands since let's let's say the end of filming 2019 uh, yeah. and go on and do something at least work on a, a first draft script or something i mean as you mentioned there have been uh, drafts in the works always even yeah. for a third dalton film that never materialized but they were in the works and yes. they are there for us to read and even when you look at uh, the first draft of GoldenEye or whatever, it was done in 94 or something, yeah. uh, which I recently read. It had a completely different opening that, that is totally weird to read uh, yeah. on this high speed train. Have you read that? I've heard some of it. I haven't fully read it, but, you know, that's it's another weird. example because they did have two scripts and they yeah. used something new anyway. So that's yeah. how much they were always on it, you know, in, in those days. Yeah. And, and I've heard fans raise the argument, but like, oh, be patient. They take a lot of time to make now more time than they did in the past. Yeah. And I'd argue, well, of course, but you can't count all the years they've had so far because they haven't even started yet. So it's not mm -hmm. like with Barbara, they take so much longer. I, I, I can understand modern filmmaking might be more time consuming than it may have been in the past. But mm -hmm. film schedules are usually quite similar to how they were in the old days, especially, you know, the 80s and 90s. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't really agree with that argument, especially they're, they're just not really or maybe they're keeping it tightly on the wraps. But it seems to us from the outside that nothing really has happened. Mm. No casting, no scripting. 
at sometimes in between, I think uh, this can't be the whole truth. There must yeah. be something in the works. But why would she go on record telling more than just one time? Yeah, we're not one step closer to development. We haven't thought about it. We haven't begun casting an actor yet or even looking for potential leads. Um, sometimes I think that that's not the whole picture. There is something yeah. they're not telling us. But why would she say something else? Why not build anticipation in the product? Exactly. Which I mean, is why I believe that might be the truth that nothing is going on. But I, I hope yeah. it's wishful thinking that secretly things have started at, the, at this point. We're in 2024 now. It's it's already um, yeah. in the old days. We would have had another one. So, yeah. um Yep. Yeah, it's uh, it's dire times to be a, mm. a Bond fan. Also, when you start to compare to rival productions like like Mission Impossible, for example, mm. I'm sure you've seen them. Of course, uh, yeah. Yeah, they seem to, especially in recent years, I I, I became quite a fan of, of those films as well. And mm. I'm like, like uh, there there seems so much more passionate and f to make these films, and also they they seem so fresh especially from Ghost Protocol to, to the most recent one, Dead Reckoning, I'm like, oh, well, Bond really needs to step up their game. And, 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 you know, they're, they're not the, the trendsetter anymore like they were you know, in the 60s. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they're, they're, there's so much examples they could take of other franchises. They have, they have James Bond. It's the, the, it's the one that started this genre in the first place they they could yeah. still make it some something special but it's yeah yeah i don't and know comparing with with mission impossible is of course obvious because it's another spy franchise that has been going on for a long time i mean mm -hmm. it's, it started in 96 uh with the first film and it had uh always big gaps in between it but right, after true. that there was always a highlight an escapism film. I mean, some yeah. some plots uh, or some plot elements are not really logical, but uh, they fulfill what we go to the cinema for, which is exactly. two hours of fun and entertainment. And I repeat that until I die, which is what Roger Moore always said. Two hours yeah. of fun and entertainment. You can think about the film later. Yeah. So uh, I thought about No yeah. Time to Die weeks after I've seen it in the cinema. Uh, I realized it did, a lot of lots of it didn't make sense after seeing it in the cinema, but mm -hmm. I started analyzing it weeks afterwards, you know, Yeah. because I go to the cinema and cinema is not uh, cheap these days, you know, no. and I, I'm very careful uh, what kind of films I watch. So I don't go running to the cinema every week. I, I go to the cinema for Bond always for Mission Impossible because I know what I get or I think I yeah. know what I'll get. And I always got that. Yeah. Indiana Jones as well, and uh, Napoleon, a bit of history drama. I know what I get yeah. with a Ridley Scott. Uh, um, I wasn't prepared for Napoleon, but okay. Uh, <laughs> have you seen that one? No, I haven't seen it yet, but I've had quite a few friends that were a little disappointed in the film. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of what I heard, but um, I, I'm still uh, yet to check that one out. Yeah. It's it's really good. It's really well made. But okay. historically, there are inaccuracies. And I say when you make a film about Napoleon, don't do inaccuracies. Yeah. Don't make him shoot yeah. cannons on a lake that was never there <laughs> just to make him bigger than he actually was. And he wasn't yeah. at all. <laughs> but um, Mission Impossible, of course, is all over the place with these things. You know, yeah. you don't have to pay attention to historical inaccuracies. But they pay great attention, some people would say, to copy from Bond. Yeah. Which or, in part, or, you can you can see similarities. Yeah, sure. It's copying, but also I like to I like to think some of it is, is homaging as well, you know, to, uh, in a way. That's the better word. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But when you look at Dead Reckoning, for example, it must have been so expensive to make. Oh, absolutely. And the stunt work and the precision behind it. That yeah. was something that was previously only known to Bond, to the Bond films. The level yeah. of precision and expert stunt work, most of it all made in Britain, you know? Yeah. And this put the films on, on the scene.
and this made them really really important um as an industry standard i think yeah and i don't want to see the franchise lose this pole position yeah and i think That's... in some way they already did uh, um and yeah. it's every time i i talk with other bond fans on this topic of the future of bond I, we the conversation tends to go to mission impossible automatically mm. Mm. Yeah. because you can so easily point to look at how they are doing it you know and mm. yeah uh, you know i'm i'm a fan of both but by heart you know i'm so passionate about about bond I, there's no tom cruise poster here there is you, you can't see it on camera but there's a sean connery one here you know i'm obviously I can, I can a bond see it, yeah fan. oh fair <laughs> enough but um so you know you you want to um you i i i am rooting for them i think it was uh there, there was this perfect analogy i i keep referencing books now but aj chowdhury in his mm. preface of um some kind of hero he he talked about rooting for bond is like rooting for your favorite sports team you know yeah. you, you're you're a, Rooting for that because I only have this when I go to the cinema for a new Bond film. It's the only film where I'm kind of nervous in a way, like, oh, is it going to be good or is? I am very excited to be entertained, but I'm much closer to Bond than I am Mission Impossible. So I'm always you're you're rooting for them and and you're first to critique them, just like your sports team. But yeah. it, but it comes from a place of love, which is why it's so hard to critique Barbara Broccoli and. Because you know you're so passionate about all the films they've made, uh, the, and I, I believe you wanted to raise the question when you messaged me beforehand. Like, are we too entitled as Bond exactly. fans? Yeah. So uh, I, I found that to be an interesting topic. Yeah. And before delving into what I think about that, what, what do you think about that that question? Because you raised it yourself. Um. It's all also a two-parter. It's 50-50. Um, I read a lot of comments. Uh, that's where this question is coming from. Are we Bond fans too entitled? Uh, or do we behave entitled to this franchise and that they give us what we want every two years uh, served on a plate? Um, because I see myself or I, I, I... Well, I catch myself being like that i want something new uh, every other year or something that has to do with bond either it is um, a concert or an exhibition or a new film which is of course the the top position you know, that you have new things to speak about uh, another thing to analyze something to enjoy with friends so i often feel entitled that they give me something new which I shouldn't. I know it's wrong because, uh, well, it's their thing. It's their decision. It's not our timing. We are not the producers. We are not. And that's that's the crucial point. When you say we are not paying the money, but we are through the yeah. cinema tickets. You know, we make the money. You realize when you when you say it out loud, we make the money. So but is that enough to say, hey, I'm entitled to a new product of your product line i don't know well yeah you know good point and i was gonna say that as well like it's the fans that they make the films but we make them successful or not by buying the tickets yeah. and and the, and the movie so that i was gonna raise the same point um but i i feel yeah i i'm, I'm not sure bond fans are too entitled because i feel We've proven, especially in recent decades, in recent years, that we're very loyal and very patient with their yes. films. But the gaps just keep getting bigger. So mm -hmm. I can see where and I am among in that camp of I made some videos about complaining myself on uh, should Eon uh, sell the rights and why aren't they doing stuff? So I'm certainly in that complaining camp myself. But again, from a place of passion and, and, and love for the franchise that you're so frustrated, like, why aren't they doing more? Mm. Instead of a place of hatred, of course, because, you know, we're Bond fans. Um, but yeah, it, I don't know. I feel like, if anything, maybe Eon is too entitled. You know, they feel like we have all the time in the world, you know, and, and maybe they do. You know, you're right. They yeah. can decide for themselves. But on the other hand, I feel like Cobby would agree with us. 
in a way like you know he would be like you have you know, everything is out there fleming is out there the stories are out there and even if it's hard to make something contemporary there's there's always the character of bond and that you could always think of something or maybe go into a completely different direction and, and make it period piece this time who knows but there, there are so many options i feel so yeah. are we too entitled i i don't know i feel like to me, maybe this is me, but I felt like if you have this franchise, it's so old now as well, over 60 years, mm -hmm. it's kind of became this tradition that, that you can, maybe not anymore every two years, but at least they should always be made, I feel. Like, mm -hmm. sort of like the World Cup of, of football, you know, mm -hmm. you expect this to come every four years. It's this tradition that's been around since the 1930s or something. Yeah. And, and, I feel with Bond, it's similar. You know, we know Daniel Craig's Bond was killed in No Time to Die, but even in the end credits, it said James Bond will return. We know the reboot button is going to be pressed, and yeah, then they have to get on with it. Yeah, uh, and are we too entitled to expect that? Well, I feel, I feel, there's no question about it that they're they're gonna eventually make more, or other people are gonna, but. Um, I just hope it, the wait doesn't drag on for many more years. And at this point, it seems like uh, we're, we're certainly not getting uh, the next one anytime soon, mm. unfortunately. Yeah, but especially saying something at the end credits like James Bond will return. I mean, this this makes you feel entitled that you get something new at some point down the line. Exactly. Um, yeah. It's like, well, I don't know, when you go to the doctor and you have your blood sample taken, they say, oh, see you in two weeks when we have the results. You're entitled to get them. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. Although yeah. I didn't return. I mean, well, <laughs> the last time they took my blood sample, the, when I was there, I think a month later, they said, oh, please come to your discussion of your blood samples. Yeah, yeah I will. And I didn't did never return. I don't know. Maybe I have something really bad, but don't know. But with James Bond will return. I certainly feel that. I think, yeah. OK, OK, you said it. Now do it. Um, yeah. Not saying when or how or with what story, but do it. Get on with it. Um, yeah. And I mean, making the gap longer than between License to Kill and Goldeneye, the gap you mentioned earlier. I, that would be hard. That would be really hard. And I think it will make the gaps between other films longer. But of course, I mean, looking at the audience, you have like maybe 10% hardcore Bond fans made out of those that we are, um, the content creators that sort of keep the whole thing, keep the interest going, you know, and uh, the ones who even have seen the the old films, the really old films. I mean, yeah. people who are in their 60s now, in their 70s. Um, and the rest, they need to reel in new, fresh audiences to stay relevant for another 20, 30 years. You know? And I think this is a daunting, daunting task. And they want to get it right. So this is me on the day where I think they're doing everything right. Take time, because you need to consider a lot of things. But on another day, I'm this 10% Bond fan who says, oh, yeah, well, well, God's well, sake. But, but uh, I agree with, with the other side as well. You're doing everything right. Take your time. But but they haven't even started taking their time. That's the point. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's the, uh, the it's been like she's been lying on the beach for three years and thinking like, oh, I first need to rest and then we'll start. So it's more it feels like they're procrastinating a, a little bit too much or I, I have to say it feels like because obviously we're, we're not from Eon, so we, we don't know what is happening behind closed doors, but it feels no. like more should be happening. Um, yeah. It's your job as a producer after all. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. What I see in the in the comment sections when you go on Facebook or on Instagram or on Twitter, no matter where you are, and you see fans uh debating no time to die especially and the death of bond at the end of the film and how it is going to continue there are really a lot of fans who say what do you want bond is dead there will never be another film bond is dead he literally died at the end of the film so yeah. what do you want i just read it uh an hour ago somebody wrote yeah, I, i have 25 films on blu-ray 
And in the 25th film, he dies. So that's the end of it. Maybe they yeah. didn't watch the whole end credits where it says James Bond will return. But the, well, and then there are fans who say, uh, okay, he died, but they said James Bond will return. So, but we want him to return not as a Daniel Craig character with a story arc and everything. We want everything going back to the 60s and 70s. And then you have another fan building on top of that. Oh, you want all the sexism and the racism and all of that and cigars and yeah, old cars and no fancy gadgets because when you're in the 60s, not much you can do with great gadgets as you had in, I don't know, Brosnan's time or something. Die another day being the overkill. Um, <laughs> so... It's really fan against fan. The tone has changed in in the comments. Uh, it has gotten a little bit too aggressive for my taste. Mm. Uh. Well, I feel a lot of the the fans that that uh, because that people saying like, "Oh, he died," so how can they continue? Are mostly casual fans, but that, maybe not. Mm -hmm. But that's my assumption because a lot of my friends that that aren't as much of a Bond fan or no Bond fan at all, but they happen to have seen No Time to Die, maybe, without really knowing too much about it. Mm. They saw him die in the end, and they were like, oh, okay, so that's that's it then. Mm. And they have no concept of that the, that was so obvious to maybe, uh, well, at least to me, like, oh, this, this was Daniel Craig's Bond's arc. They're going to reboot it. You can kind of see all Bond actors as a separate character. I know it's not. I know from it's supposed to be from Dr. No to Die Another Day, sort of the same character mm -hmm. that yeah. somehow didn't age. But you can watch it as separate universes, every actor, especially with Craig, where where it was actually the case. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, to me, it's just, uh, even especially because the credits said it too. Like they, they to me, it's no, no, uh, discussion at all. It's just a matter of hopefully they'll 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 do it soon. Mm. But yeah, what would you have said if and in the 60th anniversary and uh, No Time to Die in the cinema, Bond dying at the end, if they would have said, "That's it, the 60 years of Bond history, we draw a line under that. James Bond dies in the final film, and and that's it. That's the end of the series." How would you have felt? Uh, got it. And I, I wouldn't find it an appropriate ending to... Um, I, I don't like No Time to Die's ending in the first place. Mm. Um, I don't like that they killed off Bond. And even if they... Uh, they Because they, we had these discussions before the movie. Like, are they going to kill him off? Because people were already kind of feeling it. I, I remember there's a lot of uh, conversations I've had with this Bond channel uh, haphazard stuff beforehand. Yeah. Before... Um, mm -hmm. Uh, before the movie and we were talking about this like are they going to kill him off and we already had these concerns and then they did and if that would have been the, the complete ending of the franchise yeah i i don't like the no time to die ending but let alone mm. if that would have been uh history so yeah no that would have been even more gutting than i felt the ending was and and the sad thing about the ending i remember my experience was I wasn't. I, I got this spoiled to me that he was killed off mm. moments before going to the film. Um, someone. This is the downside of being a content creator. I I got. I shut off everything, and then someone on my personal Instagram went on and and sent me a DM. Oh, by the way, he dies in the end, and this was just literally two hours or something. And I was like, Great. oh, are they really gonna do this? So the, throughout the whole film, my, my experience was hopefully this guy was joking. And, and then it, mm. even when it did turn out, this guy was right. I was kind of pissed with him. I don't remember what his name was, but um, I didn't like the way it was done either. It was yeah, so yeah. contrived as well. It felt like the, like to me that the appeal of Bond in every film is, mm. you know, there are so many moments where they make it seem like he, he died and then he's still alive. Yeah, but there's so much moments where you always feel he's the embodiment of survival. It's like, of course, Bond would mm -hmm. survive. Bond is, and and they they kind of took that away as well. Do you remember the the documentary they did for the 50 year anniversary, the yeah. Everything or Nothing? Yeah, mm -hmm. they had um, 
I believe they have Bill Clinton at, at yeah. some point being yeah. interviewed. But he said something which I thought was quite profound to what Bond means. And he said, like, mm -hmm. it's immensely reassuring to people that there that someone is out there to, to save us all from, you know, evil and, and political nonsense that we have to deal with on a regular basis. It's immensely reassuring that there's always this one man. And they kind of took that symbolic meaning of Bond away too by by killing him off. You know, the, the, he's the embodiment of survival. He bonds you you're he he gave, he gives up at the end of No Time to Die. Bond never yeah. gives up. So it's to me it was all wrong. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but we're getting into a No Time to Die discussion now in instead of the future <laughs> yeah but, it, but it's good that you mentioned bill clinton i mean it's a presidential thing to say obviously and bill clinton is very good with words in that regard um but he's right and i mean no time to die was the film that they gave us coming out of COVID, and a lot yeah. of people said oh i want something uplifting and something that makes the world better and bond has always done that um yeah. whether it is uh, with an underlying message that I can I can defeat every bad guy, I can keep the world safe, something like that. And that's what you waited for. That at the end of the film, he saves the world. And I mean, so many films have yeah. exactly that plot line. And you celebrate it. But I mean, Bond has fans all across the globe. It is said that pretty much everybody has seen a Bond film or has had yeah. any point of contact with bond yeah. i mean that is something when you leave a legacy it's that you know um putting a, a stop to bond after 60 years with no time to die i would have also felt gutted but you said you think it's unfinished what is unfinished what can they still do with it what do you need to say it can go on there's more there's more to explore what is it you mean at this particular time uh, mm. we live in now? Yeah. Oh, that's that's uh, that's a difficult one. Obviously, I'm not a filmmaker, but I have played with the idea for uh, a couple of years of maybe do going with the period piece direction. And if you would have asked me, I'd say five years ago, I would have said, no, that's a bad idea because Bond is always in the present time. Every Bond movie has always been contemporary. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, if you watch a 60 Bond movie, you see Bond in the 60s and it's of that time, you know, mm -hmm. in the Cold yeah. War era and it's it's very contemporary. But I feel like we're in such sensitive times nowadays, mm -hmm. politically. Yeah. And maybe, maybe it could be um, a, a good, a fun direction. Like, I, my... Um, Example comes from, for example, uh, the man from Uncle that they did mm -hmm. with with Henry Cavill. Yeah. That felt like it was. I think we all feel the people that are saying Bond should be back, but it should go back to standalone adventures or and the fun. That goes to show how long with the Craig movies we've had these that that sort of fun factor that you have with Pierce Brosnan and Roger Moore or well all the the old Bond movies where he saves the world and you leave the cinema with a smile, that was kind mm. of gone longer than No Time to Die, when you think about it. A lot of the, you know, uh, mm. we had M dying in Skyfall, we had Vesper dying, which, yeah. which obviously was one of the best moments, don't get me wrong, because Casino Royale is brilliant. But a lot of it was very dire and, and, and of these mm. times. I think we're also starting to get hungry for some, Maybe have Bond with the girl again at the ending. I mean, God forbid yeah. we, we say that out loud these days. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's uh, I, I certainly would like to see that again. I mean, even Absolutely. if I, I put yeah. I put on Moonraker nowadays and, and that ending of, of that ending of Moonraker mm -hmm. with, with Roger in space after just yeah. saving humanity and hanging there and 007 and, and then take me around the world one more time. And it's and yeah. you always sit there like, ah. Oh, the good old days, you know, that's I, I watched Tomorrow Never Dies again yesterday with my girlfriend recording for the channel. Yeah. And and I it's such a generic Bond film, right? Tomorrow Never Dies is just easy story. He saves the world or at least he prevents World War Three. The end, he gets the girl. But it's uh, and I started reflecting again, like, oh, actually, it's such a good, good movie. You know, it's such a it 
ticks fun. all the boxes. Yeah. It ticks all yeah. the boxes. Yeah. Yeah. You must enjoy that one too, being with it being said uh, in your country for uh, yeah some part of the film. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tomorrow Never Dies is my go-to uh, movie for for uh, really fun and entertainment where I want to see everything explode on screen. Yeah, right. Um, it was the second film I saw. Golden Eye was my first, but uh, I think the second really turned me into a hardcore Bond fan, made me into these ten percent that we are the hardcore yeah. Bond fans, um, because as I said, it ticked all the boxes and David Arnold's music. I mean, oh, it was very... so. Uh, I use the word sparingly, but it was iconic, you know, yeah. and it fit so brilliantly. And just the opening, I said it for years yeah. and years with every new speaker system I had. I tested the new speaker system on the opening of no, uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, always. It, it And it, it aged brilliantly, too. It you did. Know, it's, it it did. still feels like a modern day film watching it Absolutely. again yesterday. And I agree with the opening. It's uh, And my girlfriend saw it her second time, but she forgot about the opening and she also said oh this is this is super tense and yep. it's it's so and it's a very simple movie but you're you're spot on like mo movies like that that you a bond movie you can just turn in the, hmm. the i'm a fan of yep. daniel craig by the way i'm not never hated on him but it's not necessarily uh, oh let's watch quantum of solace for some for some uh, easy watch an easy watch it's not usually it's a it's very action packed but it's not mm -hmm. It's different. So maybe yeah. you, uh, if you ask me what direction, go back to, to the fun element again, like Kingsman and the man from uncle and, and have the bond flair back with it. And that could be done in a period piece movie, which I don't think will happen by the way, because sponsorships would be probably be a problem. To, Absolutely. You know, that, that's yeah. the biggest argument. And I, I think yeah. I saw some people raise that and I'm like, yeah, that's a really good point. To, you're not going to really sell products set in the 60s. No. Um, it's going to be that, so. That's a very good argument. But I would like, I would love it. You know, my dream direction to go in would be to get maybe try Christopher Nolan, maybe, mm. maybe not. But he he always wanted to make a Bond film and maybe make it very clear like this is going to be a, a tight schedule. We're doing a trilogy, and then afterwards we're it's going to be another reboot, but Nolan is going to do three films. Uh, Tom Hardy or Henry Cavill is going to be the, the leading man. He won't age too much because it's tight schedule. We're doing three films and mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a classic Fleming again, uh, but also with, with a little Roger Moore flair, a little bit more fun back and uh, enjoy the, the upcoming three films and whether or not they should be related or not. It could be one arc. I guess that could be interesting again. I, I like continuity, but, mm. but uh, yeah, to me, at least that would be like something to get excited about again. Like, oh, we're going to get three films and, and you know, Nolan yeah. would be brilliant. For I, I, I can see if you want to bring new audiences in, Nolan mm. is your pick. There's a lot of uh, kids these days. And or, the leading man. Yeah, they, mm. you know, I can picture a, a poster in a cinema and it would just have it would just see, you would just see the back of bond and and the title would just say 007 by christopher mm -hmm. nolan or some the blunt instrument or whatever mm -hmm. and people would okay. probably get excited if you've never seen a bond film he could he could totally bring people in uh, yeah. whether that be set in the in the in the present time or in the in the past but yeah <laughs> i don't I mean, see it happening but i would see it regardless whether it is of a director course. I like or not, I Neither. would see it regardless uh, because I've always said when there's 007 written on it, there's 007 in it. And yes. then I'm going to consume it in any way. Like uh, the, when the DVDs came up, I mean, there was uh, Goldeneye, Tomorrow Never Dies in the shelf as sort of in a, in a box. Nobody knew what it was. I thought it was a music CD in an oversized box. I didn't even have a player, but Bond was on it. So I bought it. Yeah, that's what Bond does. So yeah. whenever there is something, I want it. But I feel there is less and less and less stuff that I actually want. Um, like aside from a film. Concerts, for example, they're nice, but songs don't change. They're the same. You've yeah. heard them yeah. over and over. You've been to a lot of concerts and you're going just to yet another concert. It will not be as exhilarating as the first one you went to. Yeah. 
And also exhibition, Bond in Motion. Yeah, it's great when it comes to Prague. It's great when it comes to Vienna. But it's still the same exhibition you saw in London. Yeah. Maybe with one more car, the car from No Time to Die. But it's still the same things you look at. And then there's the 007 shop. You want to buy stuff, but it's so expensive. <laughs> yeah. There is nothing for the normal person anymore. So Bond has really turned into this upper class thing that I can't relate to any longer. Yeah, and that's that's such a shame because I, yeah. I just told you off camera, I'm, I teach children. I heard you, you teach children sometimes too, but yeah. um, Bond is never really... Uh, something they watch anymore like like we did as as children or sometimes they, I've, I ran across a few that 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 mentioned that they're bond fans usually through their fathers mm -hmm. but it's yep. it's obvious that this happens when you space the films out this much we're we're now already like since 2019 that no time to die was finished and since 2021 since it was released but people forget like no Time to Die Inspector also had this huge gap. So we already got came off this, this gap then, and now we're in another one. So this it's like one every decade almost. We're getting near that now. Yeah. Uh, so it's no wonder people aren't, and children and stuff, aren't to engage with it anymore as, as we would like it to still be. Mm. Yeah, it's true. I'm uh, reading Casino Royale with a student at the moment. Um, oh, he wow. finds that very interesting. He knows the film. Uh, and he says the book is so totally different. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, of course it is, because you cannot, uh, in in a modern day cinema world, you cannot take the written word and put it one to one into a film. It just doesn't work, um, yeah. especially when you read the torture scene. You know, uh, and he said, "Oh, in the film, that wasn't that a rope or something, and wasn't that on a boat?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. You're right." So, and as you said, he saw the film through his father. Yeah, absolutely. And I've, I've been to students' homes when I still, before COVID, when I went out teaching uh, and went to people's homes uh, where the fathers had big images of Sean Connery and the DB5. And automatically, you are in a conversation about that exact topic. And this is great how this always works on, on this level. This yeah. is fantastic when you say, oh, I'm a big Bond fan and I'm a content creator. And oh, really? Well, what do you do? I have a YouTube channel. Oh, give me the address. And it is so great. And meeting fans from all over the world at events or something. Yes. This is so fantastic. But I really feel in the past few years, the tone has changed whenever you have a different opinion on a subject. It sometimes really gets frustrating. That's and that's sad to see. It doesn't have to be that way. No, it absolutely doesn't. So I agree. I'm, yeah. I'm, I really hope that um, <clears throat> with something new on the horizon, some info on a new film or some development, that this will give us time to, I don't know, heal sounds so pathetic, but uh, to make us come together as fans again and celebrate the franchise that we love and support the franchise that we love. I, I think support is very important even in difficult times and we don't know if they're going through difficult times if they don't have the energy anymore or something like that i still feel like supporting broccoli oh Anderson absolutely and Leon. absolutely yeah. i will always have my support um even if they kill bond whatever sure i'm angry at some point and uh, i am also angry that nothing is done now but there is this day and there is that day. And then there is today where I speak to somebody else like you and get another insight, which makes me think again about the whole thing. And yeah. that, that is very interesting. And that's that's why I asked you, because you're a strong opinion man. Well, thank you. I'll, <laughs> I'll happily take that as a, as a compliment. I don't think I've ha held up too much extreme opinions here that, that don't reflect how most people feel. But yeah, I I do maintain that in the in in terms of the discussion whether we are too entitled that Eon might feel a bit entitled at the moment too to just they have this golden egg so to speak. So uh, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe saying it makes me seem entitled again. You know, it's very contradictory, but. I feel like uh, it happens so easily. Yeah, 
Yeah, but I, I just hope they they realize it. Or if if you you know because they're obviously Barbara is human, and so is Michael G. Wilson, who is Absolutely. reaching his isn't he in his eighties almost now? How old is Michael G. Wilson? Must be. Yeah. Must be. Yeah. Yeah. So it's understandable that you want to have your your old day as well, uh, but at least maybe make maybe this is the time, especially since the Craig movies are now finished, to to switch to to say you know what. It's gonna. We're gonna pass on the ropes. You know, it's gonna. It's gonna go to whoever, yeah. and and ho- and hopefully it will be in great hands. And because it would be so reassuring for it to be in the hands of people that feel hungry to work on Bond again, and and have the passion and know and know what Bond is about. And and when you get it into creative people's hands that that know what to do with it. And can get the and hire the right people to direct it and stuff. That that might be the time now. Yeah. Uh, as and it pains me to say that because I'm very nostalgic towards uh, Barbara and Michael. At the same time, you know, they've pretty much my life. They've been the producers all my life, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Being born in 1990, I'm I'm 33 now, almost 34 th- this year. So it's been Barbara and Michael for me almost my entire life. But maybe the time has come. Especially when Barbara is still is at the, uh, an okay age, but if she's not hungry anymore, or at least seemingly not, maybe the time has come. God, I feel so <laughs> old now. <Yeah. laughs> when yeah. I when I saw my first Bond on German telly, I think Cubby was still the producer. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, well, fair enough. I mean, that, that's that's the that's the thing with Bond, right? There, there's people from all ages. I feel old sometimes speaking to people born 20 years later than I did, or you know, they they are around or 10 years later. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I think it's a it's a great community being made up of so many layers of yes. fans, yeah. uh, no matter where they come from, what country they come from. English language connects us all. That's the good yeah. thing. And yeah. uh, they, this treasure trove of opinions, you know, and yeah. the discussions, uh, lively discussions and get togethers that we have. This is unique. I mean, you probably find it in Star Wars, but I heard it's a very, I don't know, rather to- toxic community. But I, um, yeah. I heard so too. We are pretty unique, I think, in the film world as a fan community. And having these luxurious events all the time, dressing up. Um, yeah. This is pretty unique, I think. I mean, the the, the yeah. rest of Star Wars, when you dress up, of course, the, the costumes are more elaborate than throwing yourself into a tuxedo. But um, it's it's style. It's glamour. Yeah. It's sophistication, um, yes. which is what Bond is about. I mean, we can speak to any fan in the world. Bond could do the same in three languages. I think Bond could do it. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's a really great thing and i think uh until the next film arrives and this is sort of like the closing word for for our video i think we should just stick together as a fan community try to rally support for the producers and just wait it out most of us are not that old (laughs) yeah and it's very well said and i i couldn't agree more actually uh, in, in your words uh, about the community, because you're right, I, I do hear other communities, Star Wars is my, maybe a good example, I like the Star Wars films too, but I'm not that passionate into it, um, that I'm, you know, uh, in any way uh, in that fan community, but I heard it was much more toxic, we're very lucky in the Bond mm. community, I believe, because a lot of people, uh, it's very easy to talk to, especially like you said, I, I've, I've been to a few events myself in London, mm. uh, and it's always so, so fun to talk to people all, all ages and, yeah. and hear different opinions, and I rarely, even at running a YouTube channel with a, a moderate, moderately uh, big fan community, I've rarely got hate from Bond community sometimes, mm. but not not often. It's always mm. very uh, loving. So yeah. it's a very uh, good note to end on. I, I I agree. Absolutely, absolutely. Are you going to the Q the Music concert in London in October? I went. I went there last October, um, and I uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm pretty sure we're going again. 
Uh, I also, uh, there is this uh, Facebook group mm -hmm. called the Shake and Not Stirred group. I went to them two years ago. Last October, it was either Shake and Not Stirred or Cue the Music, and I chose Cue the Music last year. Uh, now I might be going to Shake and Not Stirred again, but this time okay. they do it in August, so I may be going to both. It, it depends a little bit on financially. We're this is getting personal, but we're we're in the stage of buying a house at the moment, so we're kind of saving as well. So course, um, yeah. we'll see. But uh, I definitely can recommend all the viewers that that listen to this uh, to go and see Cutie Music, especially if you Absolutely. haven't, because uh, it, it was yeah. amazing, uh, and and the show was amazing. And I also was fortunate enough to be in the the pre and after show to talk to other Bond fans and even some some Bond celebrities and that's that's so surreal always isn't it to, yeah, to, to, it is yeah, yeah. but that's yeah. what makes it great that's what makes yeah. it great I, uh, this this year I'll do it um, I have uh, taken a step back from attending events because I really had a time where so there's not much going on with Bond or I don't have any new ideas or, and I work a lot. I mean, I have really long working days with yeah. th the three jobs that I have. And at some point you're, you're just flat and you don't want to. And yeah. uh, but I shuffled myself free for October. I just this morning I spoke to my boss and she arranged the days so that I can go to London and I'm nice. going to do that full experience because I love cue the music, first of all, and I love all the fans that attend and I want to engage in conversation i want to record a video and because this is really what i set out to do in the first place so uh that is a, and london is always i mean absolutely yeah i, I want to live there but <laughs> yeah <laughs> i surely want to go there yeah yeah no great maybe we'll we'll see we'll run into each other there in october but um like i said it's pretty it sure we will. for me still but it was great last year absolutely what a fantastic experience I can imagine, yeah. But we will run into each other at some point down the line. Oh yeah, <laughs> in Absolutely. life and in person, and then uh, I'll I'll buy you a delicatessen in stainless steel. <laughs> in stainless steel, <laughs> <laughs> or, or a Vespa Martini, whatever you, whatever you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, Jeroen, thank you so much for uh, being with me today in this exclusive video. It's not part of the podcast, so. Uh, but if you have the time, listen to the Golden Grotto podcast uh, now and again interesting interesting episodes a uh, lot of fan talk about the films a uh, lot of insights um, and otherwise we th i think we established bond is not dead that's the bottom line of this video if you managed yeah. to watch all of it <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Jeroen. thank you bye bye thank you for having me cheers <laughs>